you about charity, the importance of giving charity. Um, just a little introduction about myself. I'm Mrs. Naeem and I'm an Islamic teacher. I work in two mosques and I'm also an advisor and consultant for Islam as well. Um, and I do quite a few lectures in different places um, in my spare time. So I've been invited here to talk to you all about charity and the importance of charity. And basically there are many, many ayahs in the Quran which mention the importance of giving charity. So I'm going to start off with two ayahs from the Quran. This is the first one. This is from Surah Bakra, ayah number 261. The likeness of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is as the likeness of a grain that grows into seven ears, in every ear a hundred grains, and Allah multiplies for whom he wills, and Allah is ample giving and knowing. So if we look at this ayah, it's a very, very um, strong ayah. And what it means is basically that giving in the path of Allah is like seven ears. And if you look at seven ears of corn and you open them up, and there's a hundred grains in each one. So basically, you're starting off with 700 blessings already. The next one. The next one is also from Surah Bakra, ayah number 265. And it says that the likeness of those who spend their wealth seeking Allah's pleasure and for strengthening of their souls is like a garden on a height upon which heavy rain falls. So it brings forth its fruit, multiplied, and if heavy rain does not fall on it, then a light shower is sufficient and Allah sees what you do. So this ayah explains that giving charity is like rain. A rain has lots of blessings. In some of these, it's mentioned that when it rains, your prayers are answered. And in some, some of these, it mentions that each raindrop is brought down by thousands of angels. So there is a lot of blessings in rain. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has compared giving charity to rain. If you look at all the blessings that happen once the rain has fallen, and how much fruit and how much um, sustenance comes onto the land when it rains. So those are two ayahs basically explaining how important it is to give charity. And what I was going to do now was talk to you about the, the different types of charity in Islam which are specifically related to why we are here today. So why we're here today is basically to raise money for Syria and we've got companies like Interpel and Human Care Syria where the money is going, which will not only help refugees in Syria, but also uh, along the Palestinian border as well. So the very first thing, which is compulsory in our religion, is actually zakah. And that is the very first charity that is mentioned in the Quran. And our religion is the very first religion in which charity was actually made compulsory. It's the first religion where charity was actually made compulsory. It's the third pillar of Islam. And if we look at the time when Prophet Muhammad came, at that time the rich people were really, really rich and the poor people were really, were really, really poor. The reason for that was the rich people were not giving any of their money to the poor. And that is why then ayahs came from the Quran down to tell us that we, the rich people have to give money to the poor and it's done in such a way that the wealth is distributed. So an important principle in Islam is that everything belongs to Allah. Wealth is therefore held by human beings in trust. So what we mean there is that everything, every single penny that we own is from Allah in the first place. So, so it's Allah's money. So we should be then spending in the path of Allah to try and give some of that money back to say thank you to Allah. And each Muslim pays 2.5% of one's capitals and assets to those in need. And this is called obligatory charity or zakah. 
and zakah is a very unique concept because compared to other forms of giving, it redistributes the wealth in society and when it's applied correctly, it effectively eliminates poverty. Now if you think of really, really rich people, this stops them getting super rich because the richer you are, the more zakah you have to give. So it's a very important concept. Also, even within um, the English culture, they say that money is the root of all evil. And in Islam, we say that too much money um, causes you to go astray and follow shaitan's path. So this is a method, really, of very, very rich people giving away some of their money to the poor. And if it's done correctly, did you know that if everybody in the whole world gave zakah, there would be no more poor people left in the world. It's such a beautiful concept, very, very good concept to follow. And zakah can be given at any time in the year. It doesn't need to be given in Ramadan, but there's a reason why people choose to give it in Ramadan, because each and every penny you give in Ramadan is multiplied 70 times. So if you give one penny, it's not giving 70 pennies. If you give one pound, it's not giving 70 pounds. So people choose to give it in Ramadan. But if an occasion like this comes up, which is not in Ramadan, you can still do the intention that you're giving your money as a part. Because this is for poor people, the whole idea of giving zakah is for the poor. And there's seven categories, um, all to do with the poor, where you can give your zakah. And this is actually one of them, where you can give money to orphans, to widows, for shelter, for food, for clothing. So if you do your intention that this is for zakah, you can then take that money out of your zakah whenever you're going to give it. The next type of charity which we can apply to today is actually called Sadhga Jaya. Sadhga Jaya is a special type of charity where the charity is ongoing after you die, right till the day of judgment, right till Kiyama, you get the blessings for doing seven things. And there are seven things quoted in the Hadith where you can get blessings right till the day of judgment. And all of these we can apply for today. We can give money for all these items. So the first one is actually to plant a tree. This is actually written in Sunni Muslim and Bukhari as well. Did you know that each time you plant a tree, once it's grown, each time any person or animal sits under its shade, you get the blessings. Okay, in this picture you can see lots and lots of animals, habitats. If you look at the amount of animals and beings that live in the trees, you get blessings for each and every creature that has gained its habitat from living in the, in the trees. So we've got birds, we've got squirrels. Just think of all those animals which are gaining shelter. You are, not only are you um, giving them shade, you're giving them shelter as well. And this picture is about all the food that comes from trees, all the fruit. Um, the best tree, which in Islam is the best tree to plant, is an olive tree. Because olive, not only does it give, it give shade and habitat and food, which is the fruit, it gives oil as well. And olives is one of the sunnahs of Prophet Muhammad so that's a very good tree to plant. And you can give money through these organizations to plant trees in Syria where they are all being destroyed because of all the war and everything that's happening at the moment. Palestine is a, a, a particular area where there are very few olive trees left. They've completely been destroyed. And that's another area where there's always pleas to go uh, to give money to, to plant olive trees. Okay, the second type of Sadhgajaya is participate in the building of a mosque. You can do this in four areas where mosques are being destroyed. And first of all, Zagat cannot be used to build a mosque. So basically, the charity you give would be as Sadhgajaya. So everything that happens in that mosque, everything 
all the prayers that are done in there, if you think of all the Quran that's going to be read in there, any lectures that will happen in that mosque, any sermons or Jummah prayers, each and every blessings will come to you right till the day of judgment. Even in your graves you will get those blessings. So there is great reward for building a mosque. Give a copy of the Quran to somebody and each time they read it, you will get blessings. And nowadays, in the modern technology world, you can even give a Quran CD as well. It's the same kind of thing. So any, anything, even while the person is listening, you will get blessings. So 
In Sahih Bukhari it says, I and the caretaker of the orphan will enter paradise together like this. And the Prophet Muhammad showed his two fingers like this, his middle finger and his forefinger. So what he meant was there was no gap between those two and we will both enter paradise like this if you look after an orphan in your lifetime. So very, very important um, hadith there for not just looking after an orphan but even feeding them or giving anything else that you need, help to educate an orphan. And the last type of sadhga is mainly for uh, a widow. If you look at how many women out there have not got any more husbands who have been killed in the war, and also their marriages are either fighting in war, the ones who are supposed to be looking after them once their husbands pass away, then those marriages are also either wounded or not around, and they've got completely no stability, there's no benefit systems out there. So it says here as well in Sahih Bukhari, one who cares for widows and the poor is like those who fight in the way of Allah. Also, clothing and shelter is the last type of sadhka that you can give. Clothing and shelter is very, very important for all the poor people out there. Okay, so that brings me to close um, the talk. And um, if anybody's got any questions they'd like to ask me afterwards, then I am around to the end of the event. You can ask me personally about anything else. There are so many types of charity, but I've only covered the ones which are relevant for today. Okay, just open.